I wanted to know, are we allowed to disagree and still respect each other? Because I've had lots of dozens, perhaps, meetings with a lot of people from the LGBTQIA plus community, and they've been respectful, all of them, truly. And I was hoping for that with this one, too, and it obviously wasn't hap that, that didn't happen. Sheila gunn Reed for Rebel News, and I'm here in Red Deer, Alberta, at the United Conservative Party Annual General Meeting. This is Canada's largest political convention. 6,000 people are here in attendance, and the one person I really wanted to talk to is standing right beside me. This is UCP, again, MLA Jennifer Johnson. She was removed from the party during her campaign to be an MLA, but she's back in the party. Jennifer... How does it feel to be back in the in the caucus? Oh, thanks, Sheila. It feels fantastic. It's been one week that we've been back in session, and it feels like I'm with family. Uh, I, I can say absolutely every MLA has been completely supportive and encouraging, and I feel like I'm back in the fold and part of the family. Now, I don't want to reignite controversy, but I, I, I can't avoid it. How does it feel to be somebody who had their words so misrepresented in the media for so long? Wow, it was it was a punch to the gut for sure. And when you know who you are and that and the love that you have for people and that that very value has been attacked, I think it's one of the worst things that can happen. And I would I would say that it was that case for me. And it it takes you on a journey that. You know, it's astonishing to say it, but after 18 months, I'm grateful for because it has brought me to a place again where I'm stronger, I love more, I have more compassion, and I think I'm more prepared to be a part of this team than I ever have. Now, you were subject to a struggle session that garnered international attention, and you never bent once. Where did you find the strength to do that? Probably lots of practice, but I think it comes from my core values as well. And I think it's always really important to establish the parameters that we're talking about, where we're, where we're coming from in a conversation and in our communication. And that's where I was coming from with this individual too. And when I was asked the question, um, I wanted to know, are we allowed to disagree and still respect each other? Because I've had lots of dozens, perhaps, meetings with a lot of people from the LGBTQIA IA plus community and they've been respectful all of them truly and I was hoping for that with this one too and it obviously wasn't hap that that didn't happen and even when I asked for that respect to be there it was denied so that that's is I'm sad to see that I really said I have compassion for those people I'm delighted to meet with you all yeah thanks for having us um before I would ever say though that this was a productive meeting and be counted to the list of, of contacts that you've reached out to in the queer community, I have to know a few things of where you sit. Um, will you state on the record right now that trans women are women? I've never been asked that before. Will you say that on the record right now? No, I wanna have some time to think on that. Okay, well, that's me. Um, have a great day. And I will be speaking out against this meeting because you are clearly not ready to have this. So I'm not going to be added to the list of meetings that you are going to have with people where you say, well, I met this person and this person because no, 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 no. You can't say I've had these consultations and use that as justification for you to work your way back into caucus, which is why we know you're really here. This only happens. This meeting is only happening because you're on Twitter in the Twitter sphere, and people are debating whether or not you're going to be led back into caucus, and Premier Smith is debating that. And so you need to do some PR work, and I'm not going to be your Band-Aid. I'm not going to be your pink washing, unless you can tell me right now that you believe that I, as a trans woman, right now, right here, am a woman, then we don't have a lot to work on here. You want to talk about listening to the community? If you can't start with that basic foundational principle that we are who we say we are, in our bones, then I don't think we're on the same page for working forward. So I'll give you one last chance. Are trans women women? Will you say that on the record right now? Victoria, we can disagree on things. And not on that. Still not on my it. identity. No, 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 no. Not and on I that. I can still care no. about you, even if we disagree. Wonderful. But I will be speaking out against this meeting 100% 
if you can't say that right now, because I'm not going to have you add my name to the list of meetings that you've had to show that you're, quote, doing the work, because you're not doing the work. The work is the inner work. You're learning the outer work. You're learning what you're allowed to say in public and what you're not, so you don't get in this situation again, because you got caught saying what you really thought. And you did think that. But you haven't shown that you've changed. Because if you can't respect us, then how can I work with you? If you don't believe that I am a woman sitting right here, right now, how on earth are you saying that you're working with me? What work have you done then if you can't start with, yes, Victoria, you are a woman? Can we disagree and still respect each other? No, goodbye. <laughs> Quality of life matters. Affording groceries on the basics matters. Ottawa has a different agenda. Their energy production cap will cut your family's budget, which means less money in your wallet. We say let common sense prevail. Tell the feds at scrapthecap.ca. Now, your work as a MLA really has been overshadowed by this. Uh, your constituents overwhelmingly voted for you regardless of the controversy. Let's sort of leave that behind. What are you working on now? What are your key priorities for the people of Lacombe Panoka? Oh, that's a great question, because I love Lacombe Panoka. They're such beautiful people. I'm so grateful for all of the support that they've given me, and it's been overwhelming. Uh, with I get constant texts and emails, and I'm so grateful. There's a few things that we're working on. Uh, Panoka particularly is having a few real issues with homelessness and crime. We're looking into that. It's a major major problem one of the biggest ones in the province truly the minister is aware of it and uh, has we've had lots of meetings about it uh, meetings don't solve the problem necessarily but we are hopefully coming to a solution um Gull Lake the, also is disappearing and a lot of people don't know about this it's been disappearing for a hundred years but it's been we've been sustaining it somewhat through um where we've been managing it i should say and that management has not been happening for about the last 10 years and it's dropped three feet in that time and it will continue to do so until it's gone so we're looking at solutions to save go lake it's over a billion dollar industry around that lake with over 3,000 residents around there uh, a major driver in the region not just serving that area but calgary and edmonton and border to border across the province as a resort area so very real issues in your riding um that are not touched by this controversy that you're working hard on. For sure, for sure. And then, you know, we've got, we're big drivers in, in agriculture and in energy, um, as a, as in all the province, of course, but very strong base for that in La Companoco, so that's always at the top of the list as well. Now, before I let you go, do you have a message for people who are worried about being subject to the same sort of bullying that you were subject to? I don't want how do how do you tell people to find that inner strength to push on with their own moral conviction? I'd be loving first of who you are, love people. And I think that means we have to try to find that common ground. Let's see what we've got in common. And can we have that respectful conversation no matter what? And do you really love people? And I, and I hear one question, why do you hate? And then you fill in the blank. Why do you hate these people or those people or this thing? But I think the period should come after, or the question mark should be after the word hate. Why do you hate? We shouldn't. It should be after that. We should be we should be loving always, and that means um, accepting of people who are who hold different views than us. And we can do that, as I have with uh, everyone, because none of us is the same, and that's the beauty of life and the beauty of people. Well, Jennifer, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. I am happy to find out that after meeting you in person, you're not the monster they tell me you are. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. I respect you so much and all the work you do. Thank you. What happened to UCP MLA Jennifer Johnson is exactly why I have a job. The mainstream media got so much about her wrong and we were able to tell the other side of the story. If you like the work that we're doing here from the UCP AGM in Red Deer, you can see more of it at unitedconservatives.ca.